And it's also like a gateway. I always call it the gateway drug because once you start running, you're like, huh, I want to do a triathlon or I want to try, I don't know, X, Y, and Z. And I've seen so many of our members go from running a 5K to doing ultras or tries. And it's just, it's an amazing thing to watch. Welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top podcast, where it's all about learning from the best and most inspiring minds in the sport. So together, we can train a smarter, healthier, and faster running community. Now, here's your host, Tina Muir. Hello, this is Tina Muir. Thank you so much for joining me for the latest episode of the Run to the Top podcast brought to you by Runners Connect. So last week, I talked to Trent Morrow who was a runner. Well, actually, he wasn't a runner. He was a guy who was 70 pounds overweight, who went to being the world record holder of the most marathons run in seven continents during 2014. That was 200, if you were wondering. So today we're going to hear the story of Tony Carey and Ashley Hicks Roker, who are the founders of Black Girls Run. You know, it seems like the running world is a bit more inclusive than it used to be. Well, I think a big part of that is probably because of these ladies and what they've done. So Tony is a freelance writer for Zell. She was named one of 30 black bloggers you should know by Root Magazine's 35 Under 35. And she's received Toyota's Standing Ovation Award, which was presented at Oprah's 2014 Life You Want weekend. Pretty impressive. And Ashley has worked with WRDQ TV as a TV director. She's also worked as a producer, director, social media communications manager for a nonprofit in New York. So are you ready to meet them? After a quick word from our sponsor, we're going to dive right in. Running with music or podcasts distract us when there's mental demons allowed, but not when you're tangled in cords. Jabra Pulse is a wireless sports earbud that is perfect for runners of all levels and speed. Visit jabra.com forward slash runners connect to enter to win a free Jabra Pulse every month. Welcome to the Run to the Top podcast, girls. Thank you. Hello. So right here we have um, Ashley and Tony, who I talked about a little bit in the intro, but we're going to kind of go over a few more things with their background. So um, I'm going to start with the background. Uh, I don't know who wants to explain this one. Uh, Maybe let's start with Ashley. Uh, (laughs) How did you two meet uh, initially? Yeah, let's see. I've known Tony since about 2003. Um, we actually went to college together um, and pledged the same sorority. So mm-hmm. we met through um, through the sorority. Oh, okay. And is was the idea for Black Girls Run, did that come up while you were in that sorority? Or was that a little bit further down your friendship no, road? That was like years later. Okay. Like we, uh, we actually started Black Girls Run in 2009. Okay. So. Okay, so I, did you run together before that? Were you? Was it? No, no, no. The funny thing is, I we weren't really runners in college. I played soccer in college, um, and I didn't enjoy like running just for running, <laughs> as most people would say. Yeah, that was not my cup of tea. So I didn't start running until um, 2006, after I graduated from college, and had. Um, was working and then was like, okay, I need to start working out. And then I just, that's how I kind of got into the whole running thing. Mm -hmm. And Tony, did she kind of uh, have to force you into it? Or is this something you both kind of naturally were like, oh, let's give this a try? (laughs) You know, it it was, she definitely didn't force me. Um, She, I would talk to her. So at that point, I think she had graduated on because I was a a year behind her and I would talk to her and she would say, you know, I just came back from like, this one, two mile run. And I was thinking at that time, oh my, like one, two miles to me at that time was like 10 miles. (laughs) And so I was like, I just don't, actually, I don't get it. Like why? (laughs) I just don't get it. And so, but the more that, um, like she would tell me about like, really was a lifestyle change for Mm -hmm. her. It just really intrigued me. And I could, um, I could hear like the difference, like, just the different, not, you know, she just seemed like in a happier place. Mm. And so um, I was like, huh, I'll give it a try. And then I guess the rest is history. I <laughs> and went then, out and bought shoes and started running. Yeah. <laughs> and then as you progressed, were you kind of progressing together? Or that's always the kind of hard thing when you've got two friends running that, you know, one of you is kind of coming along faster. Did you kind of commit from the start that you were going to run together? Or was it like, hey, you go ahead to the, I'm not feeling great today. Well, we were living in different cities, um, oh, okay. so 
it was it was challenging in that regard. We didn't have many opportunities to run together, but I remember she did um, a 5K, and then a couple of months later, I was like, "Well, I need to do a 5K," <laughs> and then she would do a 10K, and I'd be like, "Well, I need to do a 10K." So um, I feel like she kind of was always just taking the lead, and I was trying to to keep up uh-huh. with her. And I'm guessing now you both kind of continue to inspire each other, and you know, keep working. Uh, you know, you know, you've got the company now, so you can keep working on one another to keep improving each other. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's you know, after I think we've both kind of had our ups and downs with running, um, mm-hmm. and that's always been an interesting story to share. And I think through one, running, we've kind of found um, other things that have, that we really enjoy that make us happy. So. Um, we don't get out for a run together at all <laughs> because we work so much. Yeah. Um, but we still talk about running a lot. Uh-huh. It's amazing how hard it actually is to coordinate runs together. Even if, I mean, I have a friend of mine, um, Sarah Crouch, she's uh, living with me right now. And uh, I mean, we're living in the same house and yet we probably only run together once or twice a week because it's hard yeah. to like <laughs> match up your schedules. So it is it is crazy how hard it is to line up. So I could definitely see that. And so, um, Ashley, the uh, Black Girls Run, it started as a blog. So do you want to kind of share like how that developed and um, what exactly it is for people who may not know? Right, right. So, yeah, we definitely um, started out as a blog when uh, after Tony started running, um, we would just have these conversations about running and fitness and working out and um, so we decided to one day, like we were messaging each other on Yahoo message at work and, um, <laughs> <That was cool. laughs> <all right. laughs> and, uh, we were like, we should start blogging about this. And literally like, we just, uh, got like a blogger blog and, mm-hmm. and started, uh, Black Girls Run and, uh, we blogged for two years and then we had our first meetup at a race in Atlanta and from there, everyone's like, yeah, we should, you know, I'd love to have a group in my hometown. Um, so we launched the running groups and it went viral and just took off from there. Oh, so it kind of took off. It was very quick once you started it. It didn't. Oh, you yeah. Know. It was literally like a, a it was like a, a two year in the making overnight success. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's that's the quote you often hear, isn't it? Like I, I was an overnight success that took 10 years to get there or something. Yeah, I, I love when people say that. It always makes yeah. me laugh. Um, so then, uh, Tony, why did you feel this was like important to have a resource for African American women? I know, I mean, I know that um, I think you guys shared some statistics of uh, that eighty percent of African Americans are overweight, and you know, um, it's important for people to learn to take care of themselves first. But what what was it specifically that made you feel you needed to kind of have something out there? Was there a particular moment? Um, I I think it was just like the culmination of like coming out of college and now you're supposed to be an adult and it's a great time to reflect, (laughs) you know, on Mm -hmm. your life. You're so Uh, mature. You're so mature at that point, (laughs) um, 22. And so, you know, I I had always had issues with uh, being overweight and um, eating. I mean, I've done every fat diet I've not eaten. I've done, I mean, I've done it all. Um, and I really just wanted to, to get to a better place where I understood what living a healthy lifestyle was about. And then once I started on that journey, I, it just made me reflect on like, you know, my family, my family has a long history of hypertension, diabetes. And I think that most, African-American women can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, you know, my mom, I, call her like a serial dieter because I would see her diet Mm -hmm. all the time growing up. And I realized it wasn't necessarily that she wasn't eating the right foods or anything. It was just that she didn't take that time for herself to get out and be active. And I find that for all women, it most of the time it comes down to time. We're so busy taking care of everyone else that, you know, we're the last, the very, very last person Mm -hmm. on the list. Yeah. So then what advice do you have for people who do struggle with that guilt? Kind of like, especially when it comes to like leaving your family, like, hey, I'm going to go leave my, you know, two year old um, for an hour with X, someone to uh, while I go look after myself and go for my run. How do you how have you found it's helpful to get people over that guilt? 
Um, you know, it's a long process and it takes a lot of self-talk. I feel like I have to to talk myself through this every day because I realize that there's there's while I'm doing an hour of yoga or an hour of running, I could be doing an hour of work or yeah. spending an hour with my husband, but also realize that if I'm not giving that time to myself, I'm really no good to anyone. Mm-hmm. I'm cranky. I'm not thinking clearly. I'm foggy. So understanding for me, it was coming to terms with like, I want to be at a hundred percent so that I can give other people a hundred percent. And, you know, it's hard. I mean, there's only 24 hours in a day. And unfortunately we have to choose, you know, how we spend our time. I actually just read an article and it, it was hurtful to read, but it was so true. It said that you're only able to focus on three things at a time, whether that's family, work, sleep, friends, health, um, spiritual life. You can only focus on three. That makes sense. And I was talking to my husband about it. I was like, well, I know what three that I'm focused on. And it, it does make you feel a little guilty, but I don't know. You just have to make that sacrifice and, and choose what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult, especially with the pressure of all the different things. I know I, um, it's funny you mentioned sleep. I had, um, Dr. James Mars, who's one of the world leading experts when it comes to sleep. And I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes, but he was talking about how important sleep was, how if you don't get, you know, your eight, eight plus hours a night, you, um, you are like essentially like putting your long-term health at risk and you need to do this. And, you know, it was great for um, reminding people like, hey, if you're staying up till 1am playing video games, like get to bed. But for me, it scared me to death so that when it came to like bedtime, I was like, I have to sleep. I am going to, you know, I'm going to die if I don't get sleep. And it made it worse. (laughs) Like I couldn't fall asleep because I was like, you know that thing when you like, I need to get to sleep now. I need, and you're like counting down. Yeah. It's like, I only have eight hours and I need to get eight hours. So sometimes it's hard to like focus on those because, you, you don't want to put too much pressure on them because then you can't, you know, get the, get the, get what you need because you're too obsessed with them. And it's hard right. to find that balance with all those different things. And okay. So related to that, how, um, how is important is it to kind of think about those three things or whatever they may be your three to kind of change your priorities, to make sure they do, uh, come to the top of your list? Like, is there a way you found that, um, you said about self-talk that you found it helpful to change those priorities to give yourself at least a little bit of that attention. Yeah. So I, you know, for, for me, it's just like the, so for me, like the the sleeping thing, because I'm a night owl, Mm -hmm. like I hate getting up in the morning. And one of the things that I really, I just came back from this cruise and really had like this revelation. So when I came back, I really committed to, I'm going to get up every morning at the same time. I'm going to go to bed at the same time. And it's every day, like when, before I go to bed, I'm talking to myself, okay, Tony, you're going to get up at 5.30. Got to be at the yoga studio by 6.30. Um, so it's constantly talking to myself and reminding myself of the commitment. And that's the other thing, the commitment that I'm I make to myself, it's so easy for me to commit to other people, Mm -hmm. but for some reason, like making commitments to myself, I'm kind of just like, well, I can break a commitment, you know, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Um, But those are the, actually the most important, important commitments that you can make are to yourself. Absolutely. And it it is difficult. And I'm sure a lot of people listening were kind of nodding their head and agreeing with you. And it is, you know, that is something you need to make time for. So it's nice that Uh, Black Girls Run kind of focuses on that. So, Ashley, let's talk about how it came up. So you both went to a running club together, if I'm if I'm right with your story there. Um, But it wasn't as good of an experience as you kind of uh, hoped it would be. So can you kind of share like what what happened there and how that kind of fueled the I guess planted the seed that you wanted to do something about it? Yeah, I used to run with this uh, running group in Charlotte, and it was just a really informal running group, uh, but they had really good attendance. Um, And most of the runners were, uh, you know, running like an eight-minute mile or less. Um, And so they weren't really, you know, these were kind of more of your, like, hardcore runners. They weren't really welcoming, like, you know, a walker would not have been uh, welcoming (laughs) that group. Um, And so uh, Tony came to visit and we went to uh, one of their runs 
And I just remember uh, they essentially left us. And then they, um, then the sweeper came around and she was like, hey, you guys are taking too long. Can you (gasps) cut through? And like she (laughs) file off our route and she made us take the shortcut. And so it's just funny because after that experience, it was like, okay, we, we really want to make sure that this is a welcoming environment for folks. We want to make sure that, you know, all levels are welcome, that people don't ever feel like, and the, I mean, even to add to that, it was kind of like the, you know, no one really like talked to us mm-hmm. kind of standing over to the side. People were like, more like, what are you doing here? And it's so funny because um, a lot of times like people will come up to me and they'll talk about how much the running community has changed. And it's like, I've personally seen that shift uh, since more women have started running since black girls run of like, it's just a friendlier environment. It's not this Uber competitive, you know, the guys in short shorts kind of environment. It's like, we're welcoming to like running as a lifestyle, not necessarily people like, Oh, I ran in college and, I, you know, right, I'm qualifying for Boston. It's like, okay, well, that's not going to be everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, but yeah, so that really just inspired us to to create a, a welcoming, warm environment for our ladies. And then out of that was this idea, this concept of no woman left behind. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we launched the groups and we were doing the runs, um, we would say, you know, you always have a sweeper and then no woman would be left behind behind which was super encouraging to a lot of our newbies so when you say a sweeper I, what, what exactly are you talking about a person or like I yeah just, okay I wasn't sure <laughs> yeah. if you literally meant one of those like street sweepers was like coming along behind you or something I was like what okay so you mean a person yeah. okay yeah, I've never heard of that term before <laughs> well, we have somebody that's at the uh at the very back and okay. there's a sweeper so they would um stay with the last person and and make sure that everyone who started with us finishes with us okay okay so you did say that you've seen changes since then and yeah I was, I was hoping you would because I've seen a lot of changes and just uh more exclusivity and I've been personally trying to like promote that myself that um you know if you're out there running it doesn't matter what speed what you look like or anything like that you're a runner and trying to convince people because We often get people on Runners Connect saying, well, I'm not really a runner because I only run this pace or I only run this many miles or I don't look like that. And it's it's not about that. So I I love that you guys are kind of, um, you know, working on that. Um, But why do you think this is so important for running? Like why why is running the, the sport, I guess, that you guys chose? Was it is there something about running that in particular, um, you know, is important to you and Whoever wants to answer that one. Uh, I mean, I think running offers a lot to, to different people. Um, you know, whether it's like you need, you know, if you're the uber competitive person, running can offer you that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're really, I'm kind of like more like a Zen runner. I just learned to go out there and relax and meditate mm-hmm. and running allows me to do that. And then, you know, even for me, it's like I when I started, I was like, running is essentially free. Like, I mm-hmm. didn't even buy running shoes or running clothes. Like, it really was. I mean, now it's it's kind of more hype around like, oh, I pay for all these races and I have all this fancy gear. But, at, you know, really, at the end of the day, you could just buy some shoes and go out and hit and hit the street. And I think it's just such a great way to relieve stress. There's just so many benefits to people, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Tiny, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I think it's just so accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if we're looking at the health crisis that our country is facing, I would argue that running probably, running and walking is probably one of the easiest, cheapest, most accessible forms to eradicate that. So, um, and it's also like a gateway. I always call it the gateway drug because once you start running, you're like, huh, I want to do a triathlon or I want to try, I don't know, X, Y, and Z. And I've seen so many of our members go from running a 5K to doing ultras or tries. And it's just, it's an amazing thing to watch people find their power in running. I think that is the most beautiful thing that um, I've been able to witness is people really finding going through this whole like really spiritual experience Mm -hmm. uh through running and I think that it's just so amazing absolutely and it brings confidence to other areas of your life too like you start to see what you can do and believe in yourself so yeah I I, I absolutely agree with that 
Um, so then let's kind of get talk about um, Black Girls Run a little bit more. So firstly, I just want to ask, um, is it just for African-American women or is it, you know, you mentioned the No Woman Left Behind, but is that, um, how does this kind of work? I just, for anyone listening, just to kind of clarify. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, our, you know, our, our only role is no men. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, <we> guys. Have, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we wanted it to really be a safe space for women to share um, and talk about their lives and what's going on and, and have that camaraderie. Um, but other than that, like, we have women of all races who run with the groups. Okay, great. Okay, good. And um, so I saw last time I checked, you had over 186 thousand fans on Facebook congrats on that that's that's huge and I will put a link to that in the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash rc97 um but so looking back uh Ashley did you ever think it would would get this big when you first had that idea no I mean we thought you know this was this would be something but um you know it it's funny how they always say like things don't always turn out like you expect and Mm -hmm. so we thought it'd be something great and cool um, and when we started blogging, we thought, oh, you know, we'll write a book. Like, that's what all the blog, like at the time, like these bloggers were getting these big, big book deals and that's what they did. And so it went in a different direction that I think has been incredible and kind of beyond what we imagined with the running groups and so much more impactful in terms of really changing our community and adding value to people's lives. So, mm-hmm. And how, how did you manage manage it during this time? Did you have you like hired people to help you and how has it kind of grown over the years? Yeah. Um, we've had a number of people throughout the years to help. Um, we, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, growing throughout the years, it's, it's so funny how like the business you're over here and you're, you're like, okay, it's going to do this and then it's going to do this. And then we're going to try this. And it's like, it's been trial. It, I literally feel like it's been years of trial and mm-hmm. error. Oh, plenty of air. <laughs> I think that's always the way, isn't it? Even with running in, in like your own training, you can, you kind of have to trial and error what works. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's so true. <laughs> and then is there an ultimate goal for it? Um, I think it's just, for me, it's definitely about the longevity of it, being able to make it sustainable. Um, I don't want it to ever be like this, kind of cool thing to do from, you know, for this just that time period. I, I would want it to be something in that it's really like a, a lifestyle that people um, embrace for years to come mm-hmm. um, until there would be no longer be a need for Black Girls Run because it's just a part of our culture and our everyday lives that we work out. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's great. Tony, anything to add? No, I, I have to echo what Ashley said. I think we're basically trying to work ourselves out of a job, <laughs> which would be a great, you know, a great place to be if we are able to look back 10 years from now and see those statistics go from 80 percent to maybe 70 percent, 50 percent. I think I, I, for one, will be like standing on a mountaintop attributing that uh, decline to Black Girls Run. Yeah, yeah. well, he, so you should be. And as you mentioned about the uh, the inclusiveness has changed, and I think you guys are a huge part of that. I mean, I hope you do give each other or give yourselves a pat on the back for that because, I mean, it's definitely clear that you've had some, some uh, you know, hand in that, and especially when it comes to African-American women feeling included, uh, I know that you've been a part of that. So hopefully you already are kind of celebrating that a little bit. Okay. So then you mentioned earlier about your experience at the running group and, um, you know, do you want to kind of tell us about what you wanted to do differently? Uh, you said about the no woman left behind, but were there any other things that you kind of wanted to make sure were a focus when it came to your running groups that you've been able to set up? Yeah. One of the, other than um, making sure that everyone felt welcome was um, that it was accessible. So we don't charge any type of fee for mm-hmm. anyone to come out and participate. And I think that I always get that question. Um, people are like, so how do I join? I'm like, well, you know, you just find a group and go out and run. And they're like, that's it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's it. And they're like, no money? Nope, no money. Just, just go out and run and have a good time. And I mean, that's really the essence of Black Girls Run. One of the other things that kind of just happened organically is, I guess it's part of that, no woman left behind. But uh, once everyone finishes 
we've created a, a cheer tunnel. So literally as everyone is finishing, that, yeah. yeah, they're running through a tunnel of ladies and they're cheering everyone on, I mean, to the very last person. And I think, you know, even on, you know how it is, you just have a really terrible day of running. Oh, yeah. It's so refreshing to like come through a cheer tunnel and people are cheering you on, even though, you know, you may have struggled the entire run. So everyone leaves feeling like, they accomplish something amazing and they, they take that with them through the rest of the day or the rest of the evening. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That gave me chills when I watched, I watched one of the videos of that and uh, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but it, that, that's such a fantastic idea and I can imagine it. Yeah. If you have had one of those bad days and we all have them, we forget while we're in that (laughs) moment that everyone has them, but uh, I bet that makes such a huge difference. Um, So you guys uh, kind of remind me a little bit, um, uh, like Catherine Switzer is really working hard on, you know, encouraging women all over the world to run. And uh, we did have her on the podcast and I'll put a link to that as well. Um, but what would you like to say? This is just something slightly off topic. So maybe Tony, I guess, if you start, um, what would you like to say to men out there listening who may have like a spouse or a friend who they think should run? They think it would really benefit them to run, to, especially for themselves, like we talked about earlier. But they're kind of reluctant and they don't want to, you know, go out there and um, put themselves first. Do you have any advice? Yeah, you know, I would say that men um, men yield a great power when it comes to that. I think it's it's almost like just realizing that sometimes you need to give your spouse that permission to take that time away and that encouragement to get out there. I know like my husband, he often is like, you know, don't worry about dishes. Don't worry about laundry or whatever. I'm going to take care of it. Just go out and run, just go out and have a good time. I'll see you when you get back. And I think that that is so important. And for him, he realizes like if if she goes out for a run, she's going to come back in a good mood. That means we're <laughs> probably going to have like a good rest of the night. So, so he's doing it for himself as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's in his best interest that um, I, I, you know, I go out for a run and come back in a better place. But I think having that spousal support is so important. I've heard women who don't have that and I, my heart just bleeds for them because I know how much that support and that teamwork means when you're really trying to make a lifestyle change and, and trying to get the entire family on board, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's kind of bring it in as a culture in your family rather than just something that mommy does. It's like, you know, the kid, your kids grow up wanting to do it. Um, Exactly. So then, um, Ashley, when it comes to, uh, running, do you think, uh, we've took, Tony just talked about, you know, how important it is to kind of get out there for yourself and the support is important. But why do you think it's so important for runners to find other runners? Do you think they're more likely to stick to it? Or is there a primary reason you think it's important to find other people to run with? Um, I definitely think it helps with accountability. I think it helps with just camaraderie and um, companionship, if anything. Like there's Mm -hmm. sometimes like you know, I, I've done training runs and when I was training for a marathon and, and someone would come meet me at, you know, or even like my, my husband would circle around and he, he doesn't run, he, he rides a bike and he would come meet me at like mile, you know, 15 and ride with me for three miles. Oh. It's like that kind of, I think we just all benefit from having that kind of support. There's somebody in it with you, which is nice. Mm-hmm. And you guys have, you know, made it very easy for people to find running groups, to find people to run with in the various uh, cities. And you have an events page um, for runners to look up their area. And um, do you ha- what kind of things for someone listening who maybe hasn't heard of Black Girls Run and they wanted to kind of, they're living in a bigger city, what kind of things do you do in the various cities for like meetups? Yeah, so the groups meet up um, various times. We allow them or encourage them to set their own schedule. So, uh, for example, here in Atlanta, I can guarantee you there's a run happening every day in the morning and then the evening all throughout the city. Mm -hmm. Um, And most major markets are like that. And so um, on top of that, you know, it it really does become like this this sisterhood. Um, And it sounds really cliche, but it's true because they'll go and maybe do like, um, you know, like a wine tasting or go to like a spin class or Mm. they'll take vacations together. And so it, 
you know, you can expect more than just running after a while when you uh, join one of your local groups, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I bet it brings out, you know, all those all those other good things about running that, you know, we don't typically talk about, like the friendships that, you know, if you're that good friend to go on a vacation with someone or those relationships that you get to celebrate. I mean, have you you both found I mean, you found each other. But uh, Tony, would you say that it's been a big part of it that you've made lots of lifetime friends through running? I have. I have. You know, I used to live in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and met two wonderful ladies there. And I miss them every day because those were my running buddies. And we just developed this amazing bond. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I'm still like mourning because I, <laughs> I miss them so much because I, I moved here. But yeah, I've met so many just wonderful ladies and just been able to take a lot of their experiences and their, you know, as much as people say that Ashley and I have fed into people, I feel like people don't realize how much they've fed into yeah. us and have taught us. So I feel like I've gained so much more from this experience than anyone, um, any one of our members. It's just been a great, uh, great journey. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, are there any stories in particular that you'd like to share of, you know, maybe women who have told you their story um, throughout the time that, you know, people listening would find particularly inspiring? Yeah, you know, there, I, there's one that sticks out in my mind. I was at a restaurant randomly picking up food for lunch and this lady stops me and she introduces herself and she show, uh, shared with me that her daughter, she moved here to take care of her daughter who had cancer wow. and her uh, daughter ended up passing but she said the only thing that like got her through that time was Black Girls Run. And to me, it was like, OK, this is one of the things this is probably one of the worst things this woman's ever going to go through in her life. And for her attributing, giving Black Girls Run credit and helping her get through that, just like it, it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. um, so like we're standing in the middle of the restaurant crying with each oh. other. But it was. I mean, stories like that happen all the time of people sharing how Black Girls Run has helped them get through difficult times in their life. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And I'm, I'm sure there are many more that you haven't even heard of and that, you know, people all over the world and all over the country, especially, are, you know, realizing the importance of this. And uh, hopefully anyone listening right now, if you are in a place that doesn't have a great running group or people to run with, and it doesn't mean there aren't people out there. You're probably all just wondering uh, you know, who's going to set it up. So maybe you be that person and kind of take that initiative. Do you have any advice, Tony, for someone who did decide, okay, you know, for me, for example, I live in Lexington, Kentucky. I know there's not uh, particularly that many runners around. So if I was going to go about setting up a running group based on your experience, what would you say to people how to do that? Yeah, definitely just reach out to us. You can contact us at info, I-N-F-O, at blackgirlsrun.com. And just let us know that you're interested in starting um, a running group. And we get so many inquiries of people wanting to start groups. We mm -hmm. um, just keep track of all of those. And once we have enough critical mass, um, we'll consider starting a group. Mm -hmm. um, if you're near uh, like a major market, like in Atlanta, a lot of people are like, well, I live uh, 30, 30 minutes outside of the city. More than likely, we have a, a neighborhood run okay. that happens there. So it doesn't have to always be like in the city proper. Most of the times there are groups um, in the surrounding areas. OK, that's helpful. And yeah, I'll put a link to your email in the show notes just in case anyone's driving or running themselves and they don't have to <laughs> have a pen right now. Um, so then one other thing I wanted to ask about, Ashley, maybe if you could explain this, is about the Black Girls Run University. Like, what is it? What can people expect? Just a few uh, things about it. Yeah, actually, um, you know, one of the things that we were committed to is, is being a resource for people um, in terms of just growing and learning. Um, and so BGRU came out of that so that there's a variety of different courses that ladies can take online. Um, so that they can learn more about clean eating and running and lifting and that sort of thing. Okay, that's great. And why do you think it's so important for people to focus on, you know, learning about those things? Do you think it is awareness or 
Uh, definitely awareness. I think it's just, it's not always stuff that's common knowledge. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, investing in yourself and investing in learning and growing. Um, and, and we have a lot of ladies that are interested in doing that at this point in their life. And so it's just being a resource for them. Okay. That's really helpful. Yeah. All right. So one other thing I wanted to ask about, I don't know who wants to answer this question, but I have to ask. So I was reading about, um, the hair thing and how it's different for African-American women. You can't just wash your hair every day, like it requires more time, but like, can you kind of explain like, why is this, the hair thing such like a, you know, a big thing. And it's something that, you know, maybe as a, as a white woman, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know about. I just, I've always wondered. So as I have you both here, I'd kind of like to. (laughs) (laughs) The hair thing is, is, is so funny because a lot of uh, ladies, they use it or people, I think, more so used to use it as an excuse not to work out. It was like, I don't want to get my hair messed up. I've spent all this time in the beauty shop, you know, at the salon, getting it done. I've invested a lot of money in getting it done, and I don't want to uh, mess it up. And so, you know, now that a lot of ladies have gone natural, and, you know, Tony and I are sporting natural locks, um, it's really not as much of an issue. It's kind of like, yeah, I can just go wash it and, run and go, mm-hmm. <laughs> which makes life a lot easier. Huh, okay. So, Tony, um, just one final question about uh, where do you see uh, Black Girls Run going in the future? I mean, I know in the pre-interview we talked about uh, you have a racing conference in Atlanta in September. Maybe tell us a bit about that or what other things you have kind of lined up. Yeah, about four years ago, we started our uh, national racing conference and uh, we took a break last year, but we're bringing it back this year um, in September. September, the I'm going to get these dates wrong, but I believe it's September the 15th through the 17th. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'll make sure you have the, the correct information. Um, but it's a, a great time for all of our members to come in to one location and get mm-hmm. to meet each other and um, also get more education. Um, as I, Ashley mentioned, the BRU is just a small component of, of that. They can expect... Um, uh, celebrity trainers and fitness experts, um, you know, everything from really covering the mind, body, and soul, I guess. Um, and then we also have um, a keynote dinner with our, our keynote lunch. And um, then we'll have uh, a 5K and 10K that will culminate the event. So it's oh, cool. a long weekend mm. of, of running, partying, laughing, having fun, bonding. <laughs> it's just a great time. Mm-hmm. So it's like the Disney weekend, but like even better because you've got other things going on. That's cool. Yeah, You don't have to be yeah. out of the area by, what is it, like 9 a.m. or something. You have to be no. in Disney. <laughs> you start at like 4 in the morning or whatever. <laughs> okay. Those are the worst. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's much more casual. People, you know, are kind of, sleepy eyed coming to um to the race line because they they are just meeting so many women yeah. that they know from online like they've only met online mm-hmm. and they get a chance to meet in person oh that's so cool that's great yeah and uh, i'll have the details for that by the time this goes live so uh that's all the questions i had other than just the final kick round which uh yeah. we will be get, get to right now but i just want to thank our sponsor for one minute Some days, we need all the motivation we can get to make sure we finish our workout or make it through that cross-training session, especially when we're trapped indoors. It has been well documented that running with music or a motivating podcast can help improve performance. But as much as I love the idea, I found myself getting frustrated with the cords getting in my way or when they would rip out of the treadmill. Finally, I have a solution. Jabra Pulse is the sweat-proof, weather-proof, wireless sports earbud that is perfect for runners of all levels and speeds. Even better, it has an accurate in-ear heart rate monitor that quickly connects to your phone so you can ditch the chest strap. The earbuds will have a secure and comfortable fit thanks to the ability to customize the earpieces. Runners Connect listeners can get exclusive offers and enter to win a free Jabra Pulse headset by signing up at jabra.com forward slash runners connect. That's J-A-B-R-A dot com forward slash runners connect to start your journey or buy the Jabra Pulse at your local Best Buy. Jabra, this is where it starts. Okay, so for the final kick, I have five questions for you. I'm sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute here. But what is, uh, let's start with the greatest advice you've ever received. Man, that I was thinking about this for a while and I have received so much advice, but probably the one as it pertains to launching Black Girls Run was my mom. Um, You know, 
at, I guess it was four years ago, I was considering leaving my full-time job to do Black Girls Run full-time and was just having a really hard time trying to determine what to do. And she said, Tony, if it doesn't work out, you can always go back and get a job. And it was just as simple as that. So she kind of just gave me permission to to do this thing full time. Yeah, no, that's great. And it's funny how it was from your mom. That's that's just so sweet that (laughs) she ended up being the one to tell you and uh, kind of push you to go for your dreams. So I love that. Okay, your favorite running book or blog. And unfortunately, you're not allowed to say Black Girls Run. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I have to say it was one of the first books I read when I started running. It's the Non-Runners Marathon Guide for Women. Hmm. It is just hilarious. It's this, uh, the author is training for her first marathon and it's just so comical. Just her talking about all the things that runners go mm-hmm. through that she really wants to talk about. <laughs> uh, and it really just helped me get comfortable with this idea of running and this journey. Okay, that's good. And that's probably actually helpful for any beginner runners we have right now because there are so many things. And I like bathroom issues is one that jumps to mind to me yeah. that people just don't <laughs> want to talk about, but it's a real serious part of this here. So, okay, okay. I'll definitely put a link to that in the show notes. Uh, what would you like to tell a new runner? Uh, take it slow. Mm-hmm. You know, running truly is a journey from, you know, one run to another, but then also just long term. I think a lot of what I see when um, new runners come to us is they're so excited mm-hmm. and they just want to run every day and I want to run a half marathon. And I always just have to um, give them a little bit of a reality check and say, you know what, you have the rest of your life to run. Take it slow because the the worst thing that can happen is that you get injured or you get burnt out. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. just take it, take it one day at a time. That's great. That's great. And it's great with running that it, it's always going to be there. We kind of forget that sometimes when we're injured, but it's something that, like you mentioned earlier, you, all you need is a pair of running shoes. So any point in your life, you can go back to it. Okay. Right. Your favorite pre-race meal. You know, I have a very, speaking of bathroom issues, <laughs> I, have a, I have a very sensitive stomach. Uh-huh. So Typically, I will only do like a banana or oatmeal, Mm -hmm. and then that it has to be no less than an hour before um, I go out for a run. So you have it at like less than an hour, or you mean an hour is the minimum? Hour is the minimum. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I normally eat three hours before when I... uh, Yeah, uh, hours... uh, If it's a marathon, then I'll I'll start uh, way earlier, but hour minimum for sure um and most of the time I run this is probably bad but most of the time I run on an empty stomach Mm -hmm. um just because my my stomach is so sensitive to food I'm gonna have to work on you getting up a bit earlier so you can give you uh, when you got that 5 30 down as a habit (laughs) we'll uh we'll get you to eat first (laughs) then okay and finally your favorite running product I it's the product that I love to hate it's my foam roller Mm-hmm. I hate that thing, but it's <laughs> so good for you. Yeah. Um, and I I travel with either my foam roller or my stick everywhere I go. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah, no, I have yeah. both of those. And actually, I've got recently, uh, I did get the stiff stick. I don't know if you've heard mm. of that. It's, it's no. just like it doesn't quite bend the way the, the regular stick does. And I find it, it helps a lot more. I mean, it's more painful, but it gets into things a bit better. <laughs> So, um, and also uh, roll recovery is great for that as well. Okay, so that was all the questions I had for you both, but I want to thank you for taking the time to join me today. That was really enjoyable, and uh, I will put lots of links to the show notes, so hopefully it continues to grow, and like we talked about, you can make it part of uh, the culture rather than just a, a thing you guys do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. They're right. Having those friends to run with and that supportive group really does make all the difference. So make sure you check out the website or their Facebook group as it has a lot of helpful information on there. So you can also visit jabra.com forward slash runners connect or visit the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash RC97 to win a free set of Jabra headphones. I've never really been a fan of running with music or podcasts, but these ones are amazing and they really actually are making me run with it more. If you did enjoy this episode, I would please ask you to consider leaving a review and I'll show you how on our podcast page. But rather than giving you another link to go check out, I'll just tell you to go look at the show notes and I'll show you how to do it from there. Next week, we're going to be talking to performance and recovery specialist Kristen Marvin. She's changing the way we look at our daily movements to show that 
actually the reason we get injured is not really sometimes because we run, but just our daily movements. It's really insightful and I think you're going to enjoy it. So until then, have a great week.